Welcome everyone. If you're here for the club recovery meeting, you're in the right place. <laughs> Just check it. <laughs> so similar to the last couple of meetings, we're going to have uh, some brief presentations from the flood recovery team and then an extensive question period. Uh, so up on stage with me, and my name is Kevin Gates, I'm the Information Officer for the Flood Recovery Team. We have Steve Newton, who is the Recovery Manager, Graham Watt, who is the Deputy Recovery Manager, uh, Councillor Thompson from the City of Grand Forks and representing the City tonight, and uh, Director Russell from the Regional District of Kootenay Boundary and representing the RDKV. We will have roving mics to the audience for the questions, and I'll go over some of that stuff when we, when we get to that section. First off, we're going to have a short presentation uh, that is a bit of a recap on just what we've been doing for the last three months. Then we're going to get into, and I've got a supply list of questions from the meeting that residents had last night. So I'll go through and uh, we'll address those as best as we can, and then move into the, the, the overall question period for folks that are here. So, Steve. Okay, good. Okay, thanks, Kevin. <clears throat> so, um, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna give you a bit of a recap of what's been going on the last three months since the uh, response stuff. Um, we've been hearing a fair amount from people and from businesses and what have you about uh, uh, people not really fully understanding all the things that have been happening and, and there has been some sense that uh, not enough's being done or nothing's being done or, or what have you. So we just wanted to clarify a couple of things. There's also been a couple of uh, misprints in the media uh, that we want to clear up some factual stuff up as well. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, the month of June, and I'll speak to that and then I'll pass it off to, uh, to Graham here. Um, the response was going on, you know that, you were all part of it. There was a whole bunch of uh, ESS support stuff, the Red Cross was in town, lots of organizations showing up, fire crews, army, all that good stuff was going on, right? Uh, but at the same time, there's also some uh, initial thought going into what the recovery piece needed to look like. So I came in in early uh, June to basically take a look at all this stuff and kind of figure out what might be the best sort of uh, uh, model or recovery organization to help move things uh, forward over the next months and or years, whatever uh, the process takes. Um, and my, pretty much my main marching orders were, this has to be a community-led thing. So uh, you probably could have brought in a whole bunch of uh, high-priced uh, experts from around the country or something like that, and they would have come in and done their thing and then, then gone and left. But uh, uh, that doesn't always work in, in rural BC. It, it would work fine in, in downtown Vancouver if there's a, a major event, but not so much out here. Plus, uh, there was a real strong desire to develop some local capacity. You know, so in the future, if nasty things happen again, you've got some experts, a number of experts in the, in the area here that you can rely on, as opposed to having to import folks like myself. So with those sort of uh, guidelines, uh, uh, took a look at uh, what was going on, got some scope and scale and what have you. We identified a, a structure, and you've seen some of that at the meetings here, you know, we've got the different sections and, and what have you. Um, and we really put some good thought and energy into identifying the individuals for key positions. Um, and the big part of that was having some connection back to the community in some way. Um, we identified community organizations as well uh, that seemed to be most suited for uh, what we thought needed to happen. Uh, we did some community uh, recovery meetings, and uh, I, I wasn't here when that first started, but I understand uh, over in North and South Ruckle and what have you, there were some initial meetings, and there's been a, a number of them since then. So that happened. Uh, of course, the Premier showed up and uh, made a commitment to helping the, the recovery program, much like what he's been doing today with the, the wildfire stuff. Uh, that's kind of what they do. So that kind of gave us a little bit of uh, sort of hope that the province would step up and actually help with a bunch of stuff. Uh, there was a resilience center set up at the, the uh, curling rink. Uh, the Red Cross programs were initiated as well. Um, at the same time, that river assessment, that hydrology assessment to try and figure out where the river had established itself was going on. And, and I think there's at least six or eight locations where there's a new permanent uh, location. So that, of course, had uh, some impacts. 
there's some uh, debris assessment done both for uh, the natural debris and the unnatural stuff, so the, the vehicles and the fridges and the, the electrical power lines, that sort of thing. Uh, there's some work done around soil, air, and uh, water contamination testing, and that still goes on today as I understand it. Uh, there's a whole lot of work done by you folks around uh, cleaning up around the housing and what have you. So there's a, a bunch of logistics around the removal of the debris there going on. Uh, a number of critical infrastructure repairs, primarily in the city here, um, uh, a little bit uh, to the west, but, but most of it was here in the city. Uh, and at the same, team that, or same time, that whole DFA process was going on. So disaster financial assistance folks were coming out and uh, you know, speaking at the meetings and trying to get you folks into that system so that they could offer the, their help to the extent that they could. Uh, there was a number of faith-based organizations uh, helping remove the flood debris and, and uh, gut houses out, those sorts of things. Uh, there was a bunch of temporary housing and, and building, uh, people in motels and all that sort of stuff going on. Uh, and then there's an economic recovery uh, team uh, in place here, some, we've got some international expertise in this sort of stuff, doing an initial assessment on what this meant to the business community and the economy moving forward. So at the same time, there was still a lot of response going on. So June was a, a very, very busy month of that whole uh, storming and forming piece. And then we're still sort of a bit on the forming stuff, but we're working towards the norming now. Uh, and I think on that note, I'll turn it over to uh, Graham for uh, the month of July and what was going on in recovery. Thank you, Steve. All right, we're already there. Um, one of the most exciting things that, uh, from a, a technology side here, uh, if you've ever stopped in at one of our meetings and I pulled up a map and shown you your house with a flood on it, we've got an incredible computer mapping system and some expertise that comes on it. Basically, we're having a, all of our information is one place, so we've been learning a lot about how to do this right and, and integrating information. It's really, really going well. Um, something that I know a lot of people are concerned about is what the interim kind of winter time housing and then permanent housing uh, replacement stuff. And so um, there's a recovery housing plan well underway. Uh, we're 90% complete. We'll talk a little bit about this in August, but uh, this stuff initiated in July and we have the data that we need to move that forward. Um, some community workshops were initiated with the Kettle River Watershed Authority of Rock Creek and in Grand Forks in July. Um, and to provide some outreach and connection with landowners who need to do some erosion control, um, you know, bank protection, and, and that work will definitely need to continue as people are looking into the opportunities, but it's an area of provincial jurisdiction that uh, we're kind of interfacing with there. Um, in July, there was technical peer review of the river study, so we had outside engineers workshop the discussion, and then we workshopped it with uh, key stakeholders, the recovery operations, uh, RDKB and City, before bringing it out in August. So there's extensive review of what those options look like and how it all worked. Uh, discussed those in Cameron Council, and then also initiated the kind of human needs and wellness uh, team to help provide support for people who are facing challenges because of the, the impact of the, the flood um, on their lives. Um, the business end of it uh, can, has absolutely continued, so provincial government representatives came and, and looking at all the complexities, and that continues now with uh, Jennifer Wetmore at Community Features in place working on, on a recovery plan and some support in various different aspects. There's funding requests going in around that. Um, you know, at the very beginning, it was, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, a shoestring, but it was uh, a very small core team of people trying to get all of this stuff done. We managed to bring a couple more staff on in July. We're still a partial complement, but as we uh, look at our needs in the coming months, we're, we're definitely very busy and, and uh, we'll talk a bit about what kind of functions will be here as we go forward. Uh, one of the uh, great things on the communication end was the establishment of the website and newsletter, and that's going out every week. Um, and so we can thank Calvin Deeds for that. Um, the $48 million expression of interest, it's about scope for um, uh, the flood mitigation, the, the dikes, the setbacks, uh, potential for buyouts or land acquisition. Um, a scope was sent into the province and the federal government to talk about what is potentially be fundable. And then after the resolution on September 4th from council, uh, detailed discussions can start with the province about uh, you know what the preferred option and best interest of Grand Forks will be and how to how to work through that uh, um, the detailed uh, planning that will follow from that. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the questions I expect. 
um, the Housing Old Emergency Assistance Program. We're about to go into the third round of that for September, and so definitely connect with Red Cross about your application. Um, and then the continued disaster financial assistance. We know that they've got a big work program and they're continuing work on that. Um, and yeah, the housing options analysis. Where can we look at replacement housing for places that aren't able to be rebuilt where they are? Uh, that work is ongoing. Next slide, please. So uh, outreach meetings, uh, the survey, we'll talk about that in detail in a few minutes. Um, continued community meetings, um, in-depth, interviews with the agricultural sector and putting together a full picture of the impact and recovery options in their sector and it's been a real challenge if there's questions here tonight about the ag side of things uh, jennifer whitmore is here and has some, some good good uh, um, information in there um, at, as of today i think we're at 367 368 housing needs assessment um, out of targeted 390 which is uh, astonishing um, um, and we have the, the data to go forward with the housing plan because of that outreach work. Um, and then continued uh, business needs work and the uh, Rural Dividend Fund application for supporting some of the economic recovery. Um, so that's kind of a track where we've been. Next slide, please. Um, I just put this in here because, um, you know, our, our organizational chart is, is complex. So is the provinces, and so are the stakeholders. And so there's kind of gears need to turn and connect to each other in order to make this thing move along. And so every time we're dealing with a new complex issue that's outside of existing legislation or outside of program areas, how do we fund it? How do we um, see what's possible? How do we move new knowledge into a domain where it's just not currently here? So this practice of flood recovery is not current knowledge in BC, and all of these gears need to be connecting. Um, the print is you know, quite small. Can you tell us what's on the gears? Please? Oh, sure. It's very small writing. The big orange ball is recovery operations. The blue one is provincial government, and yellow is stakeholder stakeholders and agencies. So in order to deliver flood recovery options, working with the public, et cetera, we need to be connecting across a lot of formal processes very quickly. So next slide, please. Um, final slide here is, is uh, about timelines, and I had, had the intention that you know about this, about making a good graphic, and there's been continued uh, lack of time to do that, but what do we mean, and what did Don Dobson mean when he spoke about two to four years timeline? So when constructing a major dike, there's detailed work that needs to happen first. First of all, initial scoping, what's possible, where is it likely got to go, what does it need to achieve? And then there's detailed analysis. How much force does the river have in that area? What will happen upstream, downstream, if you put this type of dike or that type of setback in that place? What will be the impacts? And then once the, the best options are selected in that regard, um, there's, you know, in year three and year four, there's engineering and construction that needs to happen. But after the detailed analysis, uh, basically within the year, the year one, what we're looking at this fall is um, for any areas that might be affected by buyout, uh, whether they're in, in the, the direction of where a dike might be, or if they're in an area that's not recommended for permanent habitation, um, we, we basically are proposing that there's a team of experts that are able to come in, um, you know, property appraisers, lawyers, people who deal with land dealings and provide the expertise, do some additional consult consultation with, with affected neighborhoods, and then design the program based on those needs. I will answer questions at the end if... if, if. Clarification about sure. what you have wrote. First year, is that calendar year, January, January, or event twelve months to event? Yeah, basically this is actually uh, within this fiscal year, which I didn't spell out here, but by spring of 2019. So, um, you know, it's by spring of 2019, we'll know the scope, uh, by this fall we'll know the scope of the projects that are intended to be worked on. Uh, over the winter, there's detailed analysis, the floodplain mapping, the hazard assessment, etc. And then over the winter as well, this the design of the of the bio program where it's required, and and of course that involves the consultation designed by experts, etc. In order to meet the needs of of the the funding bodies for it, the municipality and the residents uh, and landowners. Thank you. And that's my last slide. So uh, pass it back.